You discuss ancient civilizations and you look at the, the great pyramids of Egypt and all the structures of Egypt. They're so magnificent that you have to wonder, like, what was that society like? What was that culture like when those things were up and running? What was that like, man? Yeah. Because I am, I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely not an archaeologist or a historian. But when I look at those structures and someone says that those things are 5,000 years old and you think about how long ago that was, like... How fucking smart were those people? Very smart. What? How, what? How did they know all that? How did they do it? What was it like living amongst them? What the fuck, man? The Great Pyramid of Giza is like 2,300,000 stones. Yeah. They're monstrous. They're so... The, the way it's engineered is so beyond imagination that 5,000 years ago people could do. But obviously they did. So what were they like, man? And what happened? What is, I think it's the Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson idea. Yeah, for sure. I think that we had, human beings had reached a very, very high level of sophistication and we got fucking flatlined again by comet impacts. Yeah. And that's the younger driest impact theory. And it makes a fuckload of sense when you see things like the pyramids, when you see things like the, all these old structures, especially ones they can't really date that well. Like that's the dirty secret about that carbon dating stuff. You got to date carbon. You're not going to date rocks, right? So you have to find like organic material in between the right. rocks, stuff that's around the rocks. Right. But you don't really know when everybody cut it. You just make a really good assessment sure. based on the carbon-based data, you know. But the thing is like you can't – you don't know when they cut that. When did they move that? Right. When did it, how many thousands of years did it take to set up the civilization? Where the fuck did it come from? Right. How did they get these stones that were many tons from a quarry that was 500 miles away. How did they do that? Like, I think that's the story of some of the stones in the king's chamber. They figured, see if that's, this is correct. I think they figured out that some of the stones in the king's chamber were from 500 miles away. The king's chamber is the one that looks like a factory or something. Like, it's weird. Like, the one that's like in the... In, what is the chamber? The king's chamber, they, I don't know why they call it the king's chamber. Um, I think it might have to do with just the size of the stones and the that. magnificence of it. Yeah, whatever the fuck that was. I don't know why. They, why do they call it the king's chamber? So anyway, um, see if you if you uh, find the the king's chamber. The stones for the king's chamber were cut from a quarry 500 miles away. Google that. See if that's correct. Because I think that was one of the big mysteries. Like, how the fuck are they moving this stuff? It's not even that it was, like, right next to it and they slowly rolled it into place. They took it from 500 miles away. Archaeologists uncovered the skier. Yeah, look at that. The pyramid stones were known to have been transported from over 500 miles away. But archaeologists do not agree on how the ancient Egyptians, I guess it probably says, pulled that off. That's just the headline. How the fuck could they do it? There's a new article on construction. That's from 2017. Oh. It's super new. But. but all of it is just guessing. The, the bottom line is.